Power 102 Jam. Listen, uh, we got a special guest on the line right now. Just uh, got connected in. Uh, this is this is this TK, right? This is Terrence, right? Yeah, what's going on? There it is, man. We got him on the line, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special guest, and they doing some really big stuff down in Atlanta, man. And and we're talking the uh, now. I want you to break down what exactly you do, the name and everything, man, for the people that's you know saying that's that's on. We talking basketball anyway, so it's perfect for you to call in. Break it down to us a little bit of what you guys do over at. It's uh, now it's respect basketball and all culture, right? In all creation. All creation. All creation. Okay. All right. No doubt. So explain to us exactly what you guys do out there in Atlanta. So pretty much uh, me and a best friend of mine, which is Justin, who's also a part of um, RBAC. So we've been friends for a while. And, um, you know, we always get together. We talk basketball, play basketball. And so we're just two basketball-minded people. So, you know, one day we'll sit down. We were just sitting there talking. And we decided that. It was our time to really start this basketball training, you know, to help kids to get better. Mm. And and with that being said, you know, uh, first of all, I have a lot of respect for, um, you know, what you guys are, are, are doing out there in Atlanta, you know, creating some positivity. And, uh, you know, it's already uh, uh, really difficult for a lot of these uh, uh, student athletes, these younger, you know, kids out there who want to be good. I feel like a lot of them are learning the wrong techniques. Um, you know, they kind of just kind of looking on looking on the TV and ju just going, but they're not learning the basics. And I've been watching a lot of, uh, you know, your social media and everything. You guys really get down to the basics. What made you guys really want to focus on, you know, that type of workout? Like, the type of workouts that you guys do look really unique. Well, man, it just, I just feel like we're losing basketball, the art of basketball. You know, everybody's all about being flashy when it's all about really fundamentals. Right. If you know the fundamentals of basketball and nobody can stop you, I think that's the best way to play. Just me personally. So, we feel like if you work on that, the better your game, everything would eventually come into play. So everything we do is all game type situations, you know, curling off screens, you know, just high basketball IQ. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the second time that I've heard someone speak on uh, AAU. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, first Kobe came out a while ago and he said that AAU is, um, you know, destroying our youth. Um, and then uh, just yesterday, I read another article with uh, KG and KG said the same thing. So how do you feel about AAU and, and, and what's going on? Because, you know, growing up, you know, AAU was like the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like every one of my like, I, you know, I was in I was in basketball camps. Uh, you know, we went to uh, back. We had a basketball camp out here that Sean Livingston went to, you know, and and, and I was in that one. And um, it was a very, very good. Everything was AAU. You need to be in AAU. You need to do this that, and the third. Like, I want to know from your perspective, how do you feel about AAU and the effect that it's having uh, on our, our youth? Uh, man, that that's kind of it's kind of hard, but because I, I actually I coach um AAU and travel ball, so mm. I I think it's good and bad. You know, it, it's good that you get to play on this national level and um people get to actually watch you play and see your skills. But I think a lot of it comes down to you know players switching teams, trying to be on this great team. You know, I just think it's just taking the competitiveness out of basketball so they all trying to link up that's what you that's kind of where you're going with it they, they all trying to link yeah, up and, yeah, and like run, the, run the league to link up. <laughs> right so it, it just kind of feel like this is what happens in the nba you know mm. everybody trying to link up and play together you know yeah. it's not going to be competitive if you're all on the same team right and you know, what what you also talk about that, you know, me and Art had a a, a discussion slash slash argument last week to close out our show. And I said that we was gonna touch back on this once you got on the line too. I wanna ask you about this ninety-two point game 
uh, that that uh, Lamelo Ball had. <laughs> now listen. Now I said this. Is what I said. I said I thought it was whack because he didn't go on the other side of the court and play no type of defense at all from what I saw. And all I saw was him just cherry pick, get the ball, lay it up, or jump up, you know, just enough to get the ball, lay it up. You know, now you got to get – he did score the buckets. But at the same time, I can't – I couldn't believe that the coach allowed him to play like that. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was trying to score those buckets for, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe Art, you said his girlfriend, right? No, it's just a classmate or something okay. like that. Okay, all right. So a classmate or whatnot, you know, I know he wants to score them buckets, but I just thought that it was whack and, and not extremely impressive. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to get your take on that too. Honestly, I think 92 points is very impressive. But at the same time, I understand where you're coming from. Like, I'm all about defense. And he was cherry-picking a little bit. But also, we didn't see the entire game. That's what I've been saying. So, it, it's kind of hard to debate that. You know, we did see the cherry-picking. But we didn't see the other, let's just say, 60 points that he may have scored. He scored so 41 I mean, in the fourth I'm, quarter. I'm kinda, I'm, what was that? He scored 41 in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, that 92 is impressive, man. I mean, it's no denying that. It's no denying that. I'm just but. saying, man, like, okay, <sighs> from a coach's standpoint, if you saw your, if you saw your star player cherry-picking like that, I mean, would you would you be okay with it? Like, would you just be like, keep playing the way you're playing? Like, <laughs> no, nah, you got to come out of the game. Man. I'm all about defense. <laughs> hey, you got to come out. Like, this, this is how I am when I play ball. All right, so you could be the best score on my team, but if you're not getting back playing defense, then I feel like you shouldn't touch the ball at all. I don't even play offense. <laughs> <laughs> I play all defense. Hey, hey, man. Hey, defense gets you buckets, too. I, all I do is get rebounds. And see, I'll just say, I'm, that was my whole situation or my whole take on it is I just felt like, listen, man, dude, you got to play some type of defense. But I guess I'm seeing both of y'all sides. You're saying that we we didn't see the whole game. 92 points is very impressive. Okay, cool. You know, um, it, it, it's a lot of stuff going on uh, in basketball right now with these young stars. I feel like this is the next generation that's coming up. You got Shaq Sun, wh whom I think is an excellent uh, player. Um, and then you also have, uh, you know, uh, what's the, what's the other kid's name that does all the dunks? What's the, what's the big dunk? Uh, Zion. 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 Now. Oh man, that kid is great. But, okay. So let me give you, let me, let me, let me say this though. Every time I see this dude, I always see him playing against people who are, how do I say this politically correct? Uh, <laughs> it'd it be a bunch of little white boys. I would keep it. I would keep it all the way on it with like a bunch of little kids. It looked like a bunch of little little small children. I don't understand. Like, okay, so yeah, he's banging them. He banging them. But, but I, I'm what? anxious to see him compete against people that are, you know, what I'm saying bigger. Man, what? I I actually seen the kid in person. Okay. So. All I can say is he can go. Like, he really can go. Like, he can do pretty much anything. Like, he can handle the ball. He sees the floor. He get rebounds, plays defense. I mean, it's easy for somebody that's spectating to be like, oh, he's playing such, such, and such. Until you actually step in front of this kid, like, you have no idea what he is really capable of. I mean, okay, it does suck that he doesn't have the competition, that right. he should, right. but just imagine him on a good team. The kid is 6'8", <laughs> 260. 6'8". He's LeBron at 16. Uh, right. He's, I, a, he's a grown man playing so, high school basketball. So what you think about Shaq's son? And, and, and actually Shaq's son, and actually what about LeBron's son, too? He, he nice, too. D-Wade's son, yeah, nice. Yeah, D-Wade's son, nice. What do, you, what, do you think about, what do you think about them? I actually like Shaq's son. Um, LeBron and Wade's son, those, those kids are going to be good. But, I mean, right now, I really don't want to talk about them or put them in the mix <laughs> until 
they actually get to high school, then we could really talk about that. Right, right. I mean, right. of course, we're going to talk about those kids because, because of the names are. Right. But if you think about it, it's probably other kids out here that we don't know of that are probably better than them. Right. No doubt. So, I mean, they are great, but it's probably other kids that's better. That's right, man. Listen, we got uh, we got Terrence on the line from RBAC out in Atlanta, Atlanta, and um, I want to talk to you about this uh, situation that you guys got going on right now. It's called a Sleep Out. What is the Sleep Out event, right? Yes, it's a Sleep Out event. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about that and what's going on with that. Okay, so the Sleep Out is um done at the Covenant House. I don't know if uh, many of you know about the Covenant House, but it is. Um, well, you got a, a lot of people. Shelter. You got a lot of people tuned from a lot of different areas right now. I mean, listen, we got people in Canada listening right now. We got a lot of people in uh, the Carolinas. Atlanta is tuned in. Uh, Florida on the check in. Uh, so a lot of southern states down there, man, it's on the check in. So it's some people out there that know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, so pretty much we're based. Ours is based out of Atlanta. Okay. And um, so me and my partner, Justin, we're going to represent for the Atlanta Covenant House, which is the facility that we actually train up out of. And so pretty much what we'll be doing will be a lot of young cats and we'll be just sitting there talking to the teams and just hanging out with them and trying to donate money, you know, to help them. Because there's a lot of homeless youth that are out there on the streets. Mm. Wow. And so, man, our, our main thing is, I mean, I know it's all about basketball and training, but at the same time, we also want to help kids that need the help that most people don't have. Right. So, and, you know, all, some of us have, you know, both parents, some have a single parent, but those kids, they have no one. And so this is what they have to resort to is just going to the shelter. Wow. Well, we have the... um we have the uh, uh, the site pulled up, uh, and we're going to get that on the website. We're going to tweet that out for everybody who uh, want to help with this situation. Um, you know, any help is, is, is needed. What you guys are doing is is, is great. It's, it's you know, um, we need it. We need to help the youth, man. I always say that. I stress that so much. We really need to help the youth as much as we can. Uh, so we're going to do what we can on behalf of Power 102 Jams to help you guys out. Uh, we're going to tweet that out. We're going to Instagram it, and we're also going to put it on our website. Uh, anything that we could do to help out, we will do. Um, also, man, before we get up out of here, man, uh, we you know, we talking basketball. Now, I know you a Laker fan. Now, I want to know your take on things. You know, you've been hearing me talk about it today. Me and Art, we had our conversation. But I want to get your take on things. How do you feel about the, the, the recent moves of the Los Angeles Lakers? Oh, man, I, I really do hate that we lost Lou Will, but you know, like back in the day when Magic was out there facilitating, the Lakers just, they just left it in his hands. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Magic handle his thing and hopefully we'll be back where we were back in the day. That's right. That's exactly how I feel, man. I feel like you got a person in here who love what they do. And, uh, you know, they love the Los Angeles Lakers, so I feel like he's going to put in all the work, you know what I'm saying, that he needs to to uh, get the team back. Now, I do have one final question for you, my brother. I want to know, how, uh, how are you not an a Atlanta fan out there? You talk a lot of mess about them Hawks. <laughs> And you talk a lot of you talk more mess about the the the, the Hawks and the Falcons than I hear you talk about any other team. <laughs> man, 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 man. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> so I mean, I just never was a Atlanta fan at all. Um, I guess it just seems like we do just enough. We don't really go out there to win the big championships. Right. So I kind of like the teams that I chose, I chose those teams for a reason. Like, um, for instance, I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Smart and man. <laughs> I became a Steelers fan because I actually, I love Heinz Ward, which was a Georgia boy. You know, he played for the Bulldogs. Okay. But also I like the organization that the Steelers have. Like, no one player is bigger than an organization. Like, they'll get rid of a player like really quick and i really like them about them right so that's that's one reason that you know i'm a big steelers fan 
All right. Lakers, it's all about showtime, baby. <laughs> it's all about showtime. Being on that spotlight. <laughs> I started out being I started out uh, uh, loving the Lakers with um, uh, Nick Van Axel or Eddie Jones. That's that's kind of like when I started rocking oh, rocking with L.A. Like you know what I'm saying with well, Eddie Jones. That was my guy right there, man. Nick Van Axel. See, see, I, see I thought differently. You ain't like, like him, especially when, especially when Kobe came into the league. I was always like, man, Kobe should be starting over Eddie Jones. I didn't want, I, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna tell you, I ain't even want Kobe in the in the with the Lakers because I knew what they was trying to do. I knew they was trying to move uh, Eddie Jones out. But Eddie Jones was nice. He, he definitely was nice at that time. Now, but. now, I, now I see how wrong I was. <laughs> hey, you definitely was wrong, but hey, we all wrong at some point in time. Right. <laughs> well, listen, man. Do me a favor. Shout out your social media uh, for the uh, for the organization, so we can get everybody to get in tune with what you guys are doing. All right. So pretty much we're on all social media, and if you look up RBAC Training, you will find us and all the information on there. Please check out a couple of these videos, and if you're in the Atlanta area, just hit us up. Um, my name's Terrence Kelly. You can call me at six seven eight. Seven three three zero zero eight two, and we could just we could schedule the training, and then we could get the work done. That's what's up, man. Terrence Kelly on the line, man. I appreciate you for joining us, man. No, nah, I appreciate y'all, man. Yes, sir. Peace out. Power one hundred two jams. Oh.